What is up guys and gals, my name is Splattercat and I'm happy to have you here today as we check out Project Aura in its Early Access Beta 2 form that just released to Steam. The game was sent over this evening, and so we're going to be spending a pleasant night just kind of playing around with its features and seeing what we can accomplish. I don't think there's going to be a whole lot to this Let's Play, it'll probably be 4 or 5 episodes. I mean, I did the tutorial in like 15 minutes, and then I managed to basically build like everything in about an hour or two in the game. So I don't think it's going to be that long of a series, but it will allow me to show off the game a little bit and showcase what it wants to be, what it's working towards, and also give players that bought the beta this week some kind of like tutorial. Because honestly, the tutorial doesn't cover everything. It does a pretty good job, but once you actually jump into the sandbox form of the game, there's actually a lot of things that you don't know about that you've got to fiddle with and figure out along the way. So without further ado, let's play ourselves some Project Aura, and we'll talk about what the game is as we go along. Project Aura is a game in which you take control of a colony and you have to guide it from its inception all the way through its completion. And basically that means you're going to be recruiting new colonists, making sure that people get out of cryo properly. It takes place in the future after like Waterworld has taken place. Essentially global warming has like wiped out our planet and we're all flooded and everything. And so basically these colonies are the last things that we have that are floating in the middle of the ocean. We have to make these self-sustained. We have to make sure that they're able to produce the food that they need to keep people fed, the liquids they need for people to ingest, like purify, and then pee out. And basically, you have to keep people's morale up as well, because the last thing you want when you're trapped on an island with a bunch of random fickle people is for them to show up on your front lawn with pitchforks and torches. Where they got them, I'm not really sure. We don't use pitchforks for any of our jobs in the colony, but they got them from somewhere, so I guess we'll just live with it. We're going to take Vital Reserve Zero. None of these are available as of right now. What these do is, I guess, right now, they're going to basically make it so that you have different outsets for your colony. The Vital Reserve Zero is the only one that's implemented right now. It starts you out with 25,000, I call them surf credits because you're in the middle of the ocean, and I was going to call them space credits, but we're not in space, so there it is. It gives you a different, I guess, preset of conditions, so I'm guessing some of these will have like high disaster conditions, some of these will have like colonists that are much more fickle and grumpy than the rest, but for right now, all we have is this right here. It gives you money, and then from there, you just play around with the building system, which is what we're going to do. As for our colony, we need to rename it right here. I think we will call it the Colony of Rumble Blankets. I like that word a lot. So anyways, I use that to name just about everything in real life. We're also going to have to design the colors of our suits for both the male and female variants. I don't know what happens. Oh, it puts it on an auto spin. That's kind of cool. Whee! I never noticed that before. There we go. Let's make all of our colonists. He's got a helmet on. He'll be fine. That means he'll just vomit in the helmet. It won't get all over the floor. Let's let them rotate. I'm glad that the suits are at least fetching. I mean, they give you a pretty good view of all the decolonists' various assets and features, I guess. Since we're all going to be eating seaweed and water for a living, I suppose that we're probably all going to be fairly trim very, very rapidly. We're all going to look like a bunch of 300 Spartans out here. Anyways, let's go ahead and we'll make our characters. I'm probably going to go with, like, some green coloration over here. There it is. That's the green that I like. That's the green. Hold on. Let me have that green. No, I don't want the brighter green. I want the darker green. There we go. That looks good. And then for our second color, I'm thinking either like silver or like platinum. Ooh, yeah, that looks good right there. Let's go with that one. Yep. I like it. I like it a lot. It gives us like a little... Oh, never mind. That one looks like it actually did not work properly. Hold on. Give me bright white colors. No, that's like a yellowish. I'm not okay with that. I want bright white. This menu is being grumpy right now. Hold on, let me see what I can get in right here. So we go all the way up, and then you got white. Eh, it looks like it says yellow right there, kind of like an off-white eggshell, but whatever, that'll work. This music in the background, oh my god, it's just like random noise. I guess you can't get rid of that gray in the middle. I wish you could get rid of that gray so it was all... I wish you'd get rid of the gray so it would be all platinum and all green. I think that would look pretty cool, but I'm happy with my choice for right now, so I guess we'll stick with that. The Colony of Rumble Blankets has been created. We can go with low difficulty. We can go with medium difficulty. It just changes the amount of money that you start out with. That's pretty much all that there is to it. I mean, if you start out on easy, you get like a little bit of extra money. The markets are actually a little bit cheaper and stuff like that. For right now, since we're just going to be showing the game off, frankly, we'll just go with normal, since I guess that's what most people are probably going to jump straight into. You can't, like, fiddle with this stuff in here at the moment. Like, I've tried everything to click these right here, and I'm guessing what these are is these are going to be various, like, starting bonuses that you can give yourself in exchange for starting with a little bit less money. You can start with, like, more core battery. You can start with more followers. You can start with, you know, inspiring foods, which are going to be things other than seaweed and water, which is what we start out with. You can get things that help people explore or do research, but I'm guessing since research and exploration are not in the game yet, my guess is that these are going to remain disabled until later on. As of right now, you can click the buttons, but they don't seem to do anything. So let's jump straight into the game. How about that? Let's randomly generate some stuff. Activate that colony. 
Oh, indeed, I am ready. You have no need to question me in such a cynical manner, game. I am ready to fly, or ready to float, I guess, since we're going to be on basically what is a giant pontoon ship. All right, well, welcome to the colony. This is it. This is the colony of Rumble Blankets, and all of these big gray areas you're going to see right here are us being able to build. So these are like the residential areas, and basically you want to segment these out by what they do later on in the game. This big shield out here protects us from the elements outside because the ecosystem has collapsed inwards on itself. And so we are held together only by due nature to the fact that we have a shield that's essentially repelling all of the nasty forces on the outside. These little laser guns right here, that's what's doing it. And also they have these pleasant look. It looks like, I don't know, some kind of like robotic insect cheering. He's like, hooray, we're not dead. Climate change didn't murder us. It's really sort of like a odd, benign malignancy living out. It's very, very uncomfortably warm. I'll add that. There's not much to really cheer about right now. I will say that this is the most benign form of malignancy I've ever felt in my entire life. But anyways, let's move forward. So the first thing that we need to fiddle with is we need to get ourselves some places for our colonists to live. But first and foremost, we need colonists and we need stuff. So let's start out by going to the market, which is right here in this little cardboard box thing. And there are going to be things that we need to buy in order to make our lives a little bit easier. Let's say that we wanted to build a building. We would click on this menu down here in the bottom. I also think you can press... I don't know, there's like a C key or something. Sometimes when menus are open, it doesn't like to do that. So yeah, the C key will allow you to open. I guess it looks like it opens by default to the seaweed farm. But there are different hotkeys you can press. I like the UI in this game, so I just use the UI. What we need to start out with is a residential block. And so we're going to go to this menu right here. I'm going to treat this like a tutorial and assume that nobody's ever played the game before. And what you need to do is click this right here for construction, down here at the bottom. It's going to open this up, and there's a number of templates that you can make for creating your residential block. There are also extra features that you can add on to the whole thing. Actually, never mind. These are not extra features. I said that wrong. What these are are the individual features. There, that's the word that I was looking for. Not extra, individual. And so the individual features of the building, if you look right here, you've got 250. We need alpha prefabs, which is plastic. We need 50 iron ingots. And then we also need to build the portal, which is on the side of the building because your colonists teleport in between buildings. So for the main block of the building, you need the 250 units of alpha plastic, you need 50 iron ingots, and then for the teleporter, you need 5 plastic. And so where do we get that? Well, we get that from the market. I'm assuming later on in the game we'll be able to, like, create all of our own stuff. Because underneath the construction menu, there are things like fabricators and things of that nature. But for right now, we have no access to any of those objects. And were we to build, like, the factories over here, we wouldn't have the stuff you would need in order to make that work either and so for example what I would start with is maybe just build yourself a residential block because people need places to live additionally if you set these up properly they will produce manure so the human waste that comes on out of here we go ahead and we put it into a big stomping field where there's just a guy where his job all day long is to stomp on manure until it becomes fertilizer we give him some nice thick boots it's not the best job in the colony though we tell him it's vital it's not really we could cut him out of the cycle entirely but don't tell him he'll get his morale will go down and so it's going to cost us 25 battery to make this work as well. The battery that we have on hand is up here at the top, in case you were wondering. And so when we build this, we just drag it, and then we drop it. If you want to rotate the building, you can use the scroll wheel to do so. I like to keep them flush with the sides, like that. Oh, we don't have the materials, I'm sorry. We need to get 255 plastic and 50 iron ingots. So let's get on that. In fact, I'll probably build two of these. So let's go to the market. In the market, you'll find different corporations that will sell you different things from plastic goods to, you know, metal goods and things of that nature. This first tab right here for the vital reserve shop is going to be all the things you need to build like your first couple buildings, namely to get a couple of these residential blocks up and running. So what we need first and foremost is we need alpha plastics. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift click these because that gives you a portion of 25 and I'll probably buy. Let's start with how much money do we have right now? We have 25,000. So let's start out with, that's going to cost us 5,000 to get those plastics. That might be a bit too much. Let's start out with maybe, let's go with 550. How about that? That sounds okay. So bam, we've got our 550 in right there. We're probably going to need some beta prefab pretty soon, but we'll keep it on the down low for right now. How you earn more credits, I'm not really sure. It looks like you've probably got some way to sell stuff eventually. I guess you would probably drag and drop it from your inventory over here. Like the stuff that you produce, maybe? I don't know. 
We'll see what happens later on. I'll fiddle with it in a little bit. I haven't actually gotten far enough to sell anything just yet, but I'm interested in getting stuff started up. So we'll get ourselves some plastic prefab right there. So we've got alpha plastics. The other thing that we needed were iron ingots, and so we can get those in the exact same shop under the metal category right here. The iron ingots, not that expensive. I'll probably just buy like 100 of them, and that should be enough for us to get going. I wish there was an all tab where it would show everything in your inventory down here in the bottom. If you want to reopen that, you just click this right here, and it gives you your little modular inventory. Other things that we want to fiddle with right now, I think that's actually all we needed to get our residential block up and running. Indeed, that is the truth. I miscalculated that a little bit, but okay. we'll, we'll get it going like right here. And so there's our first building. That's going to cost us 25 power. You'll see our powers of reserves have dropped. I'm actually going to build two of these because I enjoy, personally, I like how they fit into each other as well. You can do something when you're dragging and dropping, I think. Yeah, if you hold down the control key, it'll show you just the template for how you put things down on the ground in case you're into that sort of thing. So if you drag, drop, and then once you have it here, you press control. There you go. It'll give you a little outline right there, just in case you don't like having the little ghostly figures. Now, with every building, there are little things that you are going to want to know. If you left-click on any building, it'll bring up this radio menu. If you click on this right here, this is going to be the organization chart that you're going to be using for the remainder of the game to make everything work. Every building requires a director and some kind of blueprint in order to make it function. The one that we need is organic waste recuperation. So let's go to the market, and we will buy ourselves some organic waste waste recuperation that's going to be under the tech tree I think and it's going to be under the eco corporation shop and so let's buy two of those right now it's going to be a little bit expensive but it'll be worth it and what we want to do right here is we're going to open up the organizational menu for this building and if we look in our inventory we have these now under our tech tab under our blueprints we can drag these into right here and then you just take this and you drag and drop it and so now you will see that we have this new blueprint this new part of our production process which has been added which is the recycler add-on which allows us to take the organic waste from this building and turn it into something useful for later on once we start farming essentially if we right click on this right here you can get a more detailed information about what organic waste recuperation does for you it's basically you are the colony shit shoveler there is no lower position we need recyclers to do this job properly and so there it is right there we can assign anybody to the job but if you assign somebody who's not a recycler to the job he'll be really really upset about it and he'll lose morale over time his production cycle you'll see right here it takes 200 work points in order to produce 10 of the fertilizer and each cycle when we put somebody down here let's say we get a recycler let's do that right now in fact let's see if we have any recyclers we have well let's click slowly here We've got ourselves a director, but not much else. We may have to wait a couple cycles before we get something more useful. We only have one recite. Oh, sorry, we only have one director right now, so we will frost him down. If you wanted to get to this menu, let me do this in order for the tutorial. So let's say that you wanted to defrost yourself some colonists because they're in cryostasis right now. You would click on this little menu right here. There it is right there. And in this ring right here, it'll tell you when you have new colonists that you can peruse and see if they're going to be useful to you. We have two directors, and so I'm going to take the directors and I'm going to defrost them because they are useful to us as of right now. There's one director been defrosted. Actually, I think we might only have one director. Okay, so we're going to have to wait a little bit for this to work better for us. But what I'm going to do right now is as we go through here, if you hold down shift and then on your number pad, if you press the plus while holding shift you'll see at the top of the screen right here we can speed up the game that's what we're going to do for right now because there's not a whole lot of things going on and so you can use either the minus or the plus key while holding down shift to speed up and slow down the game there it is and so we've sped up the game to times four what we want to do is we want to get these directors to work and so we're going to left click hold on here we're going to open up the directors menu right here the organizational chart then we're going to go to our unemployment thing which is right here this is going to have all of our unemployed workers in it the director is going to be on the left right here it's got menus for directors artisans you've got medics you've got operators heavy operators you've got operators you've got pilots you've got programmers you've got recyclers researchers technicians versatiles which can do every job without losing anything but they do it a little bit worse than the person that specialized for it so versatiles are actually fairly valuable we've also got ourselves a farmer at the end of the line but we just want our director to be working right here because none of this functions without a director so we drag him in and you'll see here we will assign him to be the director of the residential block and now each time that he does this job you can right click to see how good it is. he's got seven production per cycle he gets one morale per day for doing this job which is good because he's a little bit negative over time he'll gain XP as he does this job so the more cycles he completes as denoted by this little arrow right here the more cycles that get completed the more he will get XP 
And so he'll level up after a little while, which will make him more productive and better at the job. It'll cause his stats to go up as well. Eventually, he'll get feats and become more useful at his various jobs. But just for right now, things to be aware of. Over here on the recycler side, we need a recycler, though, for this building to start production. So basically, we just have to kind of like hang out and wait for a recycler to become available. We have another director right here. I'm going to hire him because directors are going to be useful later on. You can never have enough directors, just like you can never have enough farmers, and you can never have enough recyclers. But up until we get a few more things, it'll denote it down here in this little menu. It'll say that more people are ready to join the colony once it refreshes your little list of people. If you're interested in seeing your people, they do come out of this little menu over here... Like, once you release them, you can right-click to rotate. So if you right-click and drag, it'll actually rotate the screen right here. Very, very cool little feature that I wanted to make apparent while we played the game. Down here on this side, what we could do is we can left-click. We'll hold that organizational chart. We're just going to mirror the exact same thing over here for this director. So we have another unemployed director. We're just going to drag him in real fast. He's a junior a junior director. He's going to level up over time, become like a senior director, etc. But for right now, he's just a junior director. We'll put him down right now, and then we just got to wait for more colonists to become available. That's pretty much it. If you wanted to watch for them, they do walk around, but since we've only got two guys, they're probably around here somewhere. For right now, what we need to do is you need to feed your colonists. So the next thing we need to do is we need to go all in. We need to buy ourselves some food. So the first thing that we're going to need is if we go over to the Vital Reserve Shop, and then we go to Organics, they'll have water portions and seaweed portions. We need to buy probably 100 of each of these. So let's do that. There it is. We have 100 seaweed portions and we have 100 water portions. There are 7 colonists that are ready to awake, so let's go ahead and peruse that because it'll cycle the list if we don't. We've got a lot of programmers, a lot of operators. We need the versatile will be useful, so we'll take the versatile. We need a recycler, so there's a recycler right there. We'll take that one as well. It's going to cost us 100 to wake each of these up. And if they're higher rank, you'll note right here he's a senior versatile, or she, I apologize, I didn't see your boobilies. We've got a senior versatile right here. She actually costs more money to unlock, but she is better at her job once you put her in a position. So, you know, just in case, we've got another versatile right there. I'm a little bit disappointed how many versatiles we're getting, but we'll have to put them to work, I guess. We've got the recycler, so let's go ahead and open this up right here, because obviously we want to get ourselves going with some of the production cycles. So the first thing we want to do is let's find that recycler, and so we've got Erica Dow Gregg. We're going to bring her into here, and this building is now ready to function, but be aware what you need to do in order to make this work is you need to right-click the recycling function, you need to go in here and tell it how many times you want it to repeat that function. And so I'm going to go 999, because this is a, this is a job we essentially just want to run ad nauseum. Then you're going to click the play button right here. Once you click that, you will note, you can't really see it right now, but you will note that that little button right there behind the organic waste recuperation, it turned green, and you can see that the production arrow is now moving. If you wanted to monitor each and every one of these guys right here, you could take a look at the junior recycler. It'll show that he's producing or she is producing seven production per cycle and is gaining morale per day because she's in the job of her choice. Additionally, she will start accumulating XP, leveling up, and getting better at her job over time now that she's doing it. Every time this arrow reaches the end of its destination right here, that means that a cycle has completed. And so it takes 27 cycles before we get our first 10 manure out of this whole situation. So while we wait on that, let's go ahead and feed all of our colonists. We need to go to this food menu down here in the bottom. From the food menu, you'll see a number of things. But the first thing you need to do is you need to stock the food. And so taking the water portion in here, yep, human beings do like water. We do require it every now and again. We'll take the seaweed portions. Eh, not sure I require that one quite so much. Sushi and, you know, seaweed are not some of my favorite things. But at the same time, we need to keep people fed. After you get them into the larder, this is the total stockpile. What you need to do is you actually need to assemble this into edible meals that people can eat. So when they go to get food, they will draw from these menus right here based on their needs. We'll put the water in. We'll put the larder, or I'm sorry, we'll put the seaweed in. And then what you need to do is click this button right here to make this menu finalized so that they can eat off of it. Now what you will see is that we have a synopsis. We have supplies for six colonists for 16 days. Additionally, this will affect their hydration, their nutrition. Let me see here, actually. There we go. So each day they will get zero to their hydration, zero to their nutrition, and zero to their morale. So essentially they will break even on everything that they need in order to survive. It's not an amazing meal, but it'll work for right now. If you wanted to add positive benefits to each of these, what will then happen is that if you add, let's say, tomatoes or you add potatoes to one of these lists, it increases the diversity of the meal, and therefore they would either get happiness or more hydration or more nutrition, whatever you require. Actually, I think that might not have updated properly. Typically, I remember this... Hmm. 
Oh, okay, so let's drag. Okay, so you can double up on the meals. All right, I didn't, I wasn't aware of that. Oh, we can actually drag and drop those in kind in the way that we want. Well, they'll get one water and one nutrition, so let's just leave it right there. We'll leave that. Actually, let me, let me take these off real fast. If we go with like five waters per person a day, how does that end for us? Not very well, in fact. So it says right here we are able to choose a more... Hmm, it doesn't like that much. All right, well, I'm just going to double up then for right now, and we'll just, like, make it work for the time being. The last time I did this in my previous playthrough, it actually dragged and dropped the entire, like, 100 stack in there. And then, you know, it just let people, like, draw from it as needed. As of right now, though, it doesn't appear to be functioning the same way as it did before. I'm not so positive that that's working the way I want it to, but we'll leave it as it is. They're gaining nutrition, they're gaining hydration each day, that's perfectly fine. Last time I played this, I don't like it when there's weird discrepancies like this, especially when I'm trying to teach people how to play, but whatever. It didn't work like that last time. Promise. I promise. So we need an organic waste recuperation for right recuperation, so we're going to do that just like we did before, dragging and dropping it from our inventory. There it is. Now that our organic waste recuperation is up and running, we need a recycler, but I don't think that I have one. Instead, what I have is a versatile. So I think I'll probably assign a versatile to this until we... It says we've got two more colonists right here. Maybe I can check and see if we got another recycler, because I would prefer to put somebody that wants to do this job in at that position and save our versatiles for later. We need that director. So let's buy the director, because we're going to be setting up factories in the next episode, so... Be ready and be warned. We need operators as well for our next factory that we're going to be building. So if you see operators, you should probably try and snipe them and make sure that they're in there somewhere. They are different from heavy operators, though, so be aware of that. Oh, there's another recycler. I think it just cycled. There we go. So we've got everything we need right now for our recyclers. So let's go ahead and offset that. And instead, right now, I'm going to drag this recycler in here. And oops, actually, that's a junior director. This is getting all kinds of messed up. All right, recycler, where are you? There you are. So we need Bobby Reed Green. Sounds like a race car driver. He's Bobby Reed Green coming in with the checker flag. There we go. So we've got the junior recycler all taken care of. These guys will all cycle out once we assign them to different things. I haven't figured out exactly how to clear them from this menu. I've tried out clicking. I've tried control clicking. I've tried right clicking, which cancels things in like every other menu of the game. But right here, it brings up their personal abilities and whatnot. So I don't know. It puts them on standby. Just be aware that they will clear out of this menu once you drag them to somewhere else. At least in my experience, they have. So... There it is. We should have both of these buildings. Oh, I forgot to activate it. That's right. You got to right click. We go to 999 right here. I think you can automate this too with this button and just make it like do. Oh, that makes you choose a different process just in case it has multiples. Never mind then. Don't listen to me. I don't know what I'm talking about. We'll go 999 right there and we'll finalize that. And we'll get this one started as well. Our little light will turn green. And congratulations, you've set up your residential sector in Project Dora. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerdcastle for the first episode of this little playthrough slash, I guess, tutorial that I'm running through. Obviously, I'm a little bit sketch on some of the details because if the tutorial doesn't cover it, I'm forced to kind of just like mash it out myself in my free time. And I've been working on it a little bit. But that, it took us 30 minutes to get our residential sector picked up while explaining and buying all the things that we need. I hope this is helpful to you. I hope you look forward to the next episode where we will set up our factories and get those running. Take care out there, everybody, and as always, hi-do, and I'll see you there.